This is George Humphrey, author of Uncommon Sense. Thank you for having the interest to listen to this presentation. I would like to thank my friends Rusty and Bill for the professional voice talent, Tim for the audio engineering, Chris for help with the layout, and Dee for all our valuable help in editing. Uncommon Sense is dedicated to the present-day patriots who commit their lives to the restoration of our republic and to the human values of truth, peace, love, and right action. At last, welcome, Neo. As you no doubt have guessed, I am Morpheus. It's an honor to meet you. No, the honor is mine. Please, come sit. I imagine that right now you are feeling a bit like Alice tumbling down the rabbit hole. You could say that. I can see it in your eyes. You have the look of a man who accepts what he sees because he is expecting to wake up. Ironically, this is not far from the truth. Do you believe in faith? No. Why not? Because I don't like the idea that I'm not in control of my life. I know exactly what you mean. Let me tell you why you're here. You're here because you know something. What you know, you can't explain, but you feel it. You felt it your entire life. That there's something wrong with the world. You don't know what it is, but it's there. Like a splinter in your mind driving you mad. It is this feeling that has brought you to me. Do you know what I'm talking about? The Matrix? Do you want to know what it is? The Matrix is everywhere. It is all around us, even now, in this very room. You can see it when you look out your window, or when you turn on your television. You can feel it when you go to work, when you go to church, when you pay your taxes. It is the world that has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. What truth? That you are a slave, Neil, like everyone else. You were born into bondage, born into a prison that you cannot smell or taste or touch. A prison for your mind. Unfortunately, no one can be told what the matrix is. You have to see what it is for yourself. This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill, the story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Remember, all I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. Dialogue from the movie, The Matrix. Introduction. The acceleration of events orchestrated by the power elite to create a new world order are moving our nation toward the brink of tyranny. This is totally apparent and objectively well documented to anyone that has eyes to see. However, a large majority of the citizens of this nation act as if nothing were wrong. They move through their days seemingly oblivious to this clear and present danger to themselves and their families. Are these people stupid? Not really. But they are asleep to the historic, economic, and political truths. Like most of us, they have been fed a constant stream of misinformation since their births from the Illuminati-owned media. In the story, The Emperor's New Clothes, 
The people of the kingdom were told repeatedly that their king had a beautiful new wardrobe of the finest materials, which were tailored by the greatest craftsmen. When the big day came for the emperor to show off his new outfit, the people clapped and they cheered as the emperor made his way down the main boulevard. However, out of nowhere came a small voice, the voice of a young farm boy who had not been informed about the emperor and his wonderful new attire. The little boy said only, Gracious, the emperor has no clothing. At first, most of the people ignored what he had to say. Then someone said he was just a naive little boy. And then some got very angry. The people who got the most angry were those who worked in the royal court and were trying to curry favor with the king. These people huffed and they puffed and were planning to hurt the little boy. Fortunately, some of the good citizens finally listened and thought about what he had to say, and they finally saw through their own self-imposed illusions. They protected the boy, and the king and his court had to beat a hasty retreat back to the castle. Guess what? There is not much difference between what is happening in America today and to the subjects who lived in the kingdom. We can ignore the little voice that is telling us something is terribly wrong with the world and belittle those who are telling us that the emperor has no clothing. We can even get mad and strike out at those who speak against the establishment. Or we can listen, evaluate, study, and check out for ourselves what is the truth. Now, what is the truth? For an animal, truth is the response to life from an instinctual level, while for a human being, the truth is something much more. A human being has not only the ability, but the moral responsibility to transcend their animal-like body instincts and to live a life based upon the reality of their innate divinity. To become truly aware of our soul energy, it is necessary to live a life based upon God's natural and spiritual laws. One does not have to be a Christian saint or a Hindu yogi to figure out or understand these basic principles. The awareness of these spiritual laws does not come for free, though. One has to spend the time and energy to read holy books, sincerely pray to God to help show the way, tell the truth live in peace, and work for justice for all peoples. The above actions take the faith to understand that our bodies and personalities, while intrinsically important to our life experience, are transitory. It is our soul energy that is precious and divine. The reality concerning the New World Order movement is something much deeper than most people understand. Keep in mind, most people are not even aware of the concept of the New World Order. Of the small percentage of Americans who do recognize this historic phenomenon, most see it as an economic, cultural, or political struggle. The truth is, the New World Order movement is much more than an economic or political fight. It is a spiritual conflict that is taking place all around us. You can see it when you read the news, turn on the television, or go to a movie. You can feel it when you go to work or even to church. The leaders of the Illuminati have been involved with dark occult practices for many centuries, and they are very advanced at what they're doing. The elite are doing all they can to blind us from the truth. The truth that we are holy beings and that our souls are divine. The leadership of the elite use a combination of arcane and high-tech methods to try and convince us that we have no soul energy, that life is mundane and material. Fear is their number one weapon. The elite occultists know that when humans are motivated by fear, they instinctually slip into animal-like behaviors.